<laughs> okay. Now, let's see. Great sharks for a change. We know that it is one of the most protected elasmobranch we have in the world, protected by the CETES, protected by the Convention for Migratory Species, as, and by the EUCN as vulnerable. Being so protected means that on paper nobody can catch it or actually kill it. But uh, for, to enforce a correct management program uh, for the species, we need to collect as many data as possible on white sharks. So it's strongly needed a cooperation to create local, national, and international database and shared information between researchers. And that is what we are all driving for. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. We need to estimate the population number. We have to understand how many they are, understand what is the mortality rate, the abundance, the new recruitment, and all of these things. And the long-term idea is to keep on monitoring those. Not just make a master thesis, a PhD thesis, and then the work will end as soon as a person will finish with his work. So, uh, to move towards a national and international database means that we will need to have a consistent a consistency. Means that we have to start to standardize the data we are collecting on these uh, species. So, um, for example, the photo ID. Photo ID to identify each individual by the dose of fin. We need to start uh, standardizing choose carefully what is a photo ID and what is just a shark photo. Then um, to become a photo identification, we can't have a photo that is this big with a big background and a photo that is that big and is nice and tightly cropped. So we should all come together to the same standardization method. And finally, the storage system. How do we actually build up our database in such a way that we not get out of our mind when we want to understand when we saw these sharks over time. So the data storage, <coughs> the moment we will have the same way of analyzing our data, we can actually allow for crossing referencing between our works. Now, for identification, the first point I found out that it is much better to use high quality digital camera much better to shoot in RAW. RAW are images that retain all the information about the picture. The moment we uh, save the photo as a JPEG, we are losing information. We zoom into the photo and we end up with a bunch of pixels. So RAW will, should be the way to go. Then the only usable photos should be the one when the fish is completely exposed out of the water, perpendicular to the sea surface and perpendicular to the camera in such a way that these um, notches on the rail of the dorsal fin are well visible and not bent. Uh, I'm not a, we are many of us working with white sharks. We all know white sharks use a dorsal fin to move as well. They bend it. They use the dorsal fin to change direction as much as they use all the other things. So the moment the fin is bent, we are not going to see the rail of the dorsal fin, we're going to see a straight line. The advantages of using dorsal fin is not a non-invasive technique, is reliable on the long term. They discovered in California that can retain equal to himself for over uh, 22 years already. It's the same of both sides. I should also add, seeing that um, some of us are not working in Gaja Loop, we know that our water condition, our visibility, most of the year is one meter, two meters. So using a white pattern over the body can be feasible in places where the visibility is always good. If we will start using that in Kansby, we will have a biased results due to the change of water visibility. The pattern can be used as well to barcode all the individual shards. So it can be coded and become a numerical barcode and that will help in keeping control of our over our population. Oh, that's depending on what condition, I say so. Okay, so the first step will be to take the decent photo, then improve the light and use photo, a little bit of Photoshop work to make a photo, a nice photo ID, and then crop it tightly around the photo from the bottom of the dorsal fin to the top of the dorsal fin. Doing that, 
we can barcode the things. I wanted to call it, as uh, people that have seen my talk a couple of years ago, I talked about that already. I'm using a method uh, that Mike Rutzen suggested to me, that was to divide the fin in three parts and counting the notches of each part of the dorsal fin. So this unique shark will have a barcode, a numerical code that will identify it over time. What the advantage of it? The moment I end up with a folder with not more than two sharks in the folder, not more than two, fin, the two fins, the right and left side, I can organize the database based on the pattern of the dorsal fin. So when I have a new photo, if the shark has three notches on the top, I'm not going to start searching in the database at the end of it when the shark has 12 notches on the top. I can start to look in a small range and then enlarge my range, checking into the pattern that are similar. In this way, you don't have to go through the old database every time you have a new shark. Now, the storage system I've been using over time was to create a shark folder for the ear. <coughs> Inside the folder for the ear, um, folder for each month, like that. For example, February 2011. I have a folder called 02 2011. Now, inside 02 2011, the first shark I identified, for example, the 7th of February, will have a name based on the day I identified first. So I create a folder for the shark based on when I see it the first time of the year. So the, shark, the first shark I will identify the 7th of February will be called 020701. So I make a folder. Every time I want to see when I, uh, which are the photos of this shark, I have all the photos on the same folder. Now, the photos themselves will be called with the name of the folder. So all the photos of the first time I identified the shark will be called 020701. If I recapture the shark again, I name the photos with a RS recited 0226. That means that the 26th of February, I recited the shark. That also means that when I want to see which shark I identified, uh, I recited in February, I have just to search in my window RS02, and I have all the sharks I recited in February. is quite user-friendly. And that is how my computer now looks like. It's full of things. Um, okay, that is the identification folder, that is all the month, uh, January, February, inside February, that's all the day I went out sampling and I got some decent pictures of new sharks. And inside the sharks folder, I have all the photos of this shark that I identified again the 26th of two. So I manually analyzed uh, 4,398 photos over a period of three years and I end up with 426 individuals in the area of Hans Y. Now, over time, you can also see how the number of recited sharks overwhelm the uh, number of newly identified sharks. In the first year of work, of course, I didn't have any shark I knew before. In 2010, 47 sharks was identified the previous year. In 2011, 127 sharks were identified already in the previous year. So we are not talking about thousands of animals around anymore, as my opinion. So um, to manually, is it here? No, it's here. No. To manually analyze all these cited and recited um, events over time, um, what I basically did, I printed out the name of my files. The name of my files are my photos. The name of the file is telling me when I saw the shark the first time and when I recited it over time. So I print out the names of the photos and I can create my matrix just reading when I see them every time. So it's, we have to create the mark recapture binary matrix and generate with the program marks a population dynamic estimate. Now, so I bring the internet. Okay. So I got my fin, I check if it is usable. If it's not usable, it goes in the dustbin. 
it is yes usable, then I have to make the barcode. Check the database. And see if it's a new one. Now, if it's a new one, I will create this folder. Here, I will, well, not a rename, just a rename. Rename my photos and put it in the new folder. If is uh, no new, I have to rename all the photos and add to already existing folder. Okay, and these folders, and if that one was if that one, you know, it goes inside. Now, from this folder, I make the matrix. That means that taking the photos was not the most uh, time consuming part of the work. It's time consuming on the long term. Um, it's difficult to keep on doing that. It works. Is I didn't lose control of the shards, but I'm um, kind of behind now. Because after I crop it and make it nice, I have to put it in the folders. They are nice and ordinate, but on the long term, the more shards we are identifying, the more time consuming it, it gets. Um, so to manually analyze a large quantity of data also can result in an increased increased human error. Once I print out all the names to create the Excel file with all the names and all the recapture events, who did it uh, as well as I did, knows how long does it take. So, tada, we have the solution that is automatized the whole process. The whole idea is from, since we understand if it's a new one or not, this part will take will be taken over by what we decide to call Sharpbook. It's going to look like Facebook. <laughs> so the aim of this program will be to generate automatically our mark recapture matrix from the photos we took, from our data. Then that will minimize the human error, because I can promise you, when you will work with 400 rows and 400 columns, and trying to put your <coughs> one in between a lot of zero, you might get confused and you have to double check many times. So if that can be done by a program, it makes life easier and will decrease our human error. Of course, that will allow to uh, manage a large amount of data, so it will be useful over time. And it can update our metrics uh, real time. Every time we have the new photo, we put it in the storage system and the program will tuck, put the new point on our matrix. So the manager is a management program. We can manage our population um, in a reliable way. And I think that can be the first step for a national and then international photo ID database. If we can test it here and export it uh, overseas, maybe that can change um, a bit our life. So that is the first matrix uh, ever generated for white shards automatically. So the program read my storage system and created this picture. And that can be exported in TXT, Excel, can be used for uh, mark recapture, used for the program mark. So that makes really life easy. And then the other thing is also to do that, to go from putting that in the folder, etc. We want to get to the point that the moment you have a, a photo, a program will put the photo automatically in the right folder. So we will have that out of our shoulders as well. And that is uh, the design of how Sharp uh, book uh, should look like. So we have the Sharp code, it's um, unique for each individual. You go, and then go. You put the code and then you go directly in your folder that will, it's going to be organized in such a way that you will see where it's been recited with the GPS position and all this data can be automatically, automatically transformed in a graph, in a map, whatever we need for our publication basically. 
DNA fingerprint. My work is on the DNA. So the idea, once we, we all use that, hopefully, is to write here if this shark was sampled before or not. And the moment it gets sampled and fingerprint with the genetic, we can put in there the genetic fingerprint. So if, for example, somebody will kill a white shark pretending that these jaws came from his grandfather and that wasn't a sighted species at that time and you want to sell it, we take a little bit of the jaws, we do the uh, genetic fingerprint, we put it in the program and it will appear that the shark was nice and alive a couple of months ago. We put him in jail. <laughs> So that is then how to, uh, we can filter all our information, uh, we can sort our metrics by location, sex size, and the only other we need to do. And then of course the metrics will be, we can export our metrics as an Excel TXT file and filter it by location, sex size, and even genetic uh, haplogroups as soon as I finish with my analysis. So the advantages with, will be that the program is capable to read your folders. You don't have to uh, upload the information manually. The program reads your folders and create the metrics. It can also be managed online. The program will work on your laptop, but the next step will be using it online so that that can be shared and managed again. Minimize the human error and will allow at a certain point to keep um, a real-time control over the population status. The, if every year we will have our metrics, we will start seeing if the population is declined or not. And of course it will help on a long term to standardize the way we are collecting data and make our data collection shareable. I think that's it. Questions?